Cualquier pregunta en el proceso, estoy acá. Cualquier pregunta en el proceso, estoy acá. Mi, la sesión está iniciada, está de largo, no se preocupen por el tiempo porque está delim es limitada. Listo, entonces empiecen. No olviden compartir pantalla y... Wow. Yep. I'm here. So can you let me share the screen, please? Yes, Paul. No, you can. Okay, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Let me open. Yes, um... Pao, ¿qué estás compartiendo? ¿Qué estás haciendo? These directions will be repeated as you make your adjustments. You will also be able to adjust the volume during the test whenever the volume button is active. These directions will be repeated as you make your adjustments. You will also be able to adjust the volume during the test whenever the volume button is active. These directions will be repeated as you make your adjustment. You can hear the audio, right? You need to try the voice recorder in the engages. Okay, this is a test. Oh, I need to turn on my camera. Okay. okay. See. Esos son los datos que les dimos del test ayer. Yep. I'm looking for it. Okay. Beautiful. I'm going to go out, grab something to it, and come back in a bit. See you guys in a bit. Okay. Mm. Chicas, me esperan un minutito ya. Are you ready? Let me Let's next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Need to put my information here. Next. Mm -hmm. Puedes, puedes dejar de compartir hasta que completes la información. Ok. Sí. Pablo Narváez dice, si paras la, la, la grabación y le vuelves a iniciar cuando está la... la Pau. While listening to these directions, click on the volume slider bar found below. Using this volume slider bar, you can increase or decrease the volume to a... Okay. 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 Okay.
These directions will be repeated as you make your adjustments. If you have any sound problems that cannot be corrected by adjusting the volume, please ask your test proctor to help you. When you are satisfied with the volume level, please click on Next. Note, you will also be able to adjust the volume during the test whenever you see the volume slider bar. ¿Se te abrió otra pestaña? ¿Otra ventana? No. No, no es la misma. ¿Le pusieron? Ok. Ok. Tengo que esperar a que llegue a cero, ¿verdad? O ya pongo el uh -huh. bien. Sí, sí, cero.
The listening section has three parts. Part one, four short conversations, each followed by one question. Part two, one longer conversation, followed by four questions. Part three, one lecture, followed by six questions. You will hear each conversation or lecture only one time. You must answer each question before continuing. To continue to the next question, click the Next button. In this section, you cannot use the Back button to return to an earlier question. The number of questions and the amount of time you have to answer the questions will be shown separately for each section in the Question Time Left window on your screen. Time is not counted while you are listening to the conversation or lecture. Now prepare to listen to four short conversations and to answer one question after each. You will have a total of 80 seconds to answer the four questions. This time will be shown in the Time Left window. I wanted to go to the movies tonight, but I have to study for the physics exam. Do you want to study together? I have a history report to write first. If I finish early, I'll come over. What will the woman do tonight? Sharon, did you enjoy your history class yesterday? Well, I feel a little silly. I was talking to a friend in the student union, or well, someone I hadn't seen in a long time, and when I remembered the class, it was already over. What did Sharon tell the man about her history class? My mother called this morning and said my grandfather is in the hospital. I wish I could visit him today, but I have classes all afternoon. Maybe you can send flowers today and visit him tomorrow. That's a great idea. Do you know a good flower shop? What will the woman probably do next? Hi, Tara. Did you hear that Professor Johnson's biology class was canceled? He moved the quiz to next week. No, I didn't. Thanks for telling me. That will give me more time to write my history report and finish my math homework. In what class does Tara have a quiz? Now prepare to listen to one longer conversation and to answer four questions about the conversation. You will have a total of two minutes to answer the four questions. This time will be shown in the Time Left window. In the following conversation, a student speaks with a departmental assistant. Good afternoon. I'm looking for Professor Land. I'm his assistant. Can I help you? Well, I'd like to take Sociology 512, but I see that you need permission from the professor. That's right. By the way, I'm Jamie Jones. Nice to meet you, Miss Jones. I'm David Salazar. Nice to meet you, David. 
Well, I want to enroll in Sociology 512, and... Okay. Well, now, there are some other sociology classes you need to complete before you can take Sociology 512. I know. I took them all at my first college. I'm a transfer student from... Oh, a transfer student. Then we'll have to see your grade reports and the description of the courses you've already taken. But I sent my transcripts to the dean's office. I've already been accepted here. And have you received credit for all your courses? Yes, I have. For all except an art course, a drawing course that I took during my freshman year. Okay. Well, then I'll phone the dean's office and ask them to fax me the information. Will that take long? Well, I could do it right now, but it's late. They may be closed for the day. Would you mind trying? I really want to take this class. I'll try calling. No, I'm just hearing their voicemail. It looks like they're closed for the day. Could you try first thing in the morning? I'll do that. Now, besides the transcripts, Dr. Land is going to want to talk to you himself. Oh, like an interview? Kind of. The class is a seminar, and there's a lot of work to do on your own. He wants to make sure that you'll be motivated to do that. There's no problem about that. I really want to do my own research. On what? On public opinion, especially on how public opinion influences television. Oh, really? That's something Professor Land has done a lot of research on. I know. That's why I'm so eager to take this course. If all your records are in order, I'll set up an appointment with Professor Land. I'll try to call you back about this before noon tomorrow. Thank you very much. Now, prepare to answer four questions about the conversation. You may refer to your notes when answering the questions. What does the man need from Professor Land? Why does the man want to take Professor Land's class? Why does the woman need to see the student's transcripts? You will now hear part of the conversation again, followed by a question. Oh, like an interview? Kind of. The class is a seminar, and there's a lot of work to do on your own. He wants to make sure that you'll be motivated to do that. There's no problem about that. I really want to do my own research. What is the main reason the assistant says this? He wants to make sure that you'll be motivated to do that. Now, prepare to listen to a lecture and to answer six questions about the lecture. You will have a total of three minutes to answer the six questions. This time will be shown in the time left window. Following is part of a lecture on the subject of birth order. Think about where you stand in relation to the rest of the children in your family age-wise. Were you the firstborn child, the last, or somewhere in the middle? Or are you an only child with no brothers or sisters? Long before scientists got interested in the topic of birth order and how it affects people's personalities, people noticed that birth order, where you stand in the list of children, had some influence on your personality. Psychologists started studying birth order a number of decades ago to find out if it's really true that birth order affects who you become. Birth order has quite a bit of influence on personality. 
The early research indicated that firstborn children were more likely to be leaders than children born later on. Now we're not saying that it's a guaranteed outcome, these are just tendencies. Now the studies found that only children and firstborn children, we can lightheartedly refer to these children as onlys and earlies, are often very conscientious, organized, very confident, and they have strong leadership abilities. They get a lot of practice by leading their younger siblings. They tend to value academic success, so they do well in school. Only children and firstborns are also used to getting a lot of time and attention from the parents because they have no competition. Now there's some new research that suggests that birth order may also play a role in the type of occupations people choose when they grow up. Earlies and onlys are more likely to be interested in intellectual and academic pursuits than are later born children, the younger children. Let me give you an example. 21 of the first 23 American astronauts who went into space were either the first born or only children. These astronauts were mostly military pilots, a high achievement career that you might expect those children to pursue. Later born children, in contrast, are generally more interested in artistic careers and careers that let them work outdoors a lot. Later born children are often characterized by having good people skills. They're not so worried about excelling in school. They're often charming and even enjoy showing off. So, not surprisingly, you find these later born kids in fields like sales, performing arts, and entertainment. Now, one hypothesis about why birth order influences career choices is that it may have to do with parenting styles. Parents of only children and firstborn children may discourage the pursuit of physical activities because they, the parents, are more fearful. They're brand new parents, they have no experience, and they don't want their new little darling to get hurt. There's some evidence also that parents may encourage only or firstborn children to follow interests that could lead to a prestigious career someone that can bring respect to the family. So if the firstborn says, I want to be an actor, the parents might resist because that's not a traditional professional career. However, as those parents go on to have more children, they tend to relax. They learn that children are pretty durable, and so they allow younger children to take more risks and pursue non-traditional careers. By the time the parents get to the third or fourth or fifth child, they've gotten over their initial desire for someone to lead the family to prestige. Now, what's an application of this research that we can make? Well, it's useful for people who do career counseling, but it shouldn't be thought of as a deterministic thing. There are plenty of people who don't fit the pattern. The last thing we want is someone saying, you can't do that job because it doesn't match your birth order. The information can be helpful, however, because people perform best when they're in a position that uses their strengths. Now, prepare to answer six questions about the lecture. You may refer to your notes when answering the questions. What is the talk mainly about? What is a typical characteristic of a firstborn or only child? The professor mentions the early astronauts to provide an example. Why are later born children often employed in sales or performing arts?
What is one hypothesis about how parenting styles change as additional children are born into a family? You will now hear part of the lecture again. Listen, then be prepared to answer a question based on what you have heard. Now, what's an application of this research that we can make? Well, it's useful for people who do career counseling, but it shouldn't be thought of as a deterministic thing. There are plenty of people who don't fit the pattern. The last thing we want is someone saying, you can't do that job because it doesn't match your birth order. What does the professor imply?
Because you will be recording your spoken responses in this section, please make sure your headphones are on and your microphone is positioned in front of your mouth. The speaking section has two parts. In the first part, you will both hear the question and see it printed on your screen. In the second part, you will hear a statement that presents two differing opinions or points of view on a topic. After you hear the statement, you will be asked to express your thoughts on the topic. In this section, you will warm up with a short conversation. You will have 40 seconds to answer a series of short questions. The timer will count down as you speak. This section will not be graded. After the beep, please say your name. Thank you. And where do you live? Good. And what is the weather like today? Okay. And finally, as the timer counts down, tell us one thing you like to do to have fun. Thank you. This concludes the speaking practice session. Directions You will both hear and read a question. Answer the question giving specific reasons and examples that support your answer. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your answer and 45 seconds to speak. Describe the teacher who has made the biggest difference in your life. Speak now. Directions. Listen to a short statement presenting two differing opinions on a topic. Then express your thoughts on the topic, giving specific reasons and examples to support your opinion. After you hear the statement, you will have 45 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to speak. Ever since the first man-made satellite was launched in 1957, mankind has shown an increasing appetite for the exploration of space. We have traveled to the moon and back, performed experiments in the zero gravity of orbiting space stations, and sent probes to the furthest reaches of the solar system. Marvelous as these achievements are, they are also very costly. Proponents of space exploration argue that these costs are justified by the understanding we gain about the cosmos and by the practical applications we make on Earth of technologies originally designed for the space program. 
Others argue that the billions of dollars spent on sending men and machines into space would be better invested right here on planet Earth, where there is no shortage of problems that could be alleviated by refocusing both the money and scientific resources currently devoted to the barren frontiers of space. What are your thoughts on this question? Speak now.